there are a few mistakes a whole lot of instrument students make on their IFR checkride. Let's look at what they are and how to avoid them. Non-precision approaches are a consistent weak area. Here, we're doing the RNAV in a runway 1-4 at Ocean City. We're going to be told by ATC that we're clear direct P-fare for the approach. There's a hold in lieu of procedure turn depicted at P-fare. Do we do it? The answer would be yes, but consider that this is a TAA approach, with the approach area broken out into segments. Our course, direct to P-fare, is 081 degrees. That puts us in this segment, which specifically says no PT, so we won't do it. Now here's mistake number one, not removing the hold from our GPS. On the Garmin 530, we go into the flight plan, see the hold after P-fare? That needs to go away. We push the cursor to bring it up, scroll to the hold, then hit clear. Now, after PFAIR, we'll be sequenced directly onto the final approach course. We're using the CAP 140 autopilot, which is following the navigation course as well as holding our altitude. Now that we're cleared for the approach, what do we do? The next item isn't exactly a mistake, but highlights a best practice. Many pilots will immediately push APR to arm approach mode. We'd still be following the GPS lateral guidance, but now we'd have armed the vertical glide path guidance too. Vertical guidance on this approach comes from an advisory glide path. There's nothing wrong with intercepting the glide path early, especially as it's just an advisory glide path, but best practice, especially on a real precision approach like an LPV or an ILS, is to intercept it at the prescribed intercept altitude, and that's usually at the FAF. Still, there are valid reasons why some pilots intercept early on some approaches, so I won't call this a mistake. Instead, let's bug the altitude we should be at when we reach the final approach fix, 1500. So we get to p fare and the autopilot turns us onto the approach course. We'll reduce power and do our descent down to 1500. When we reach 1500, we level off. It's at this point that we can arm approach mode. The only thing that changes is that now GS glide slope mode is armed. When we capture the glide path, we'll follow that down. We don't need to have 1500 bugged anymore. Some pilots will bug the missed approach altitude 2000. If you do that, make sure you're aware that you'll need to stop the descent at 700 by pushing altitude hold. Let's actually bug the MDA 700 though for better situational awareness. The glide path needle comes in, GS mode goes active, we reduce power and configure for the approach, and the autopilot starts us on the descent. There are a number of opportunities for mistakes on this non-precision approach. The first one is treating the MDA 700 feet as a decision altitude. Many pilots will get to 700 and, because we've been following the needle down, immediately go missed there just like we would on a precision approach. This isn't the missed approach point though and the missed procedure calls for an immediate climbing turn. If we did the turn now, we'd lose our protection. Instead, we're gonna arrest our descent by pushing altitude hold and increase power for level flight. So we don't go missed at the arrival at MDA. Where do we go missed? Here's the next mistake people make. I've had students look at the plate and say correctly the missed approach point is at the runway and then say, I can go missed any time before then. Again, if you go missed early and make the prescribed turnout, you won't have protection. You could definitely start a climb any time here, as long as you stay at least 700 MSL, but you have to follow the lateral course of the approach. So we continue in. We pass one mile away from the runway. This is the visibility minimum for the approach. Around a half mile out, we spot the runway. A mistake would be to descend down to the runway and land. We might have the required visual references to descend below MDA, but we don't have the required flight visibility. If we did, we'd have spotted the runway from a mile out, not half mile. So we get to the missed approach point and start the mist, making a climbing right turn to 2000. And finally, we have a classic mistake, not pushing the suspend button on the GPS to sequence us into the missed approach procedure. This is an all too common fail point on the check ride, so make sure you're pushing that OBS button to unsuspend. Knowing the rules and procedures is helpful, but understanding the why of what it is you're doing is what makes truly safe and expert instrument pilots. This is what Flight Insight Ground School is all about and is what makes our pilots the smartest and safest out there. Join us today at the link here and in the description.